All right, so I'm here with Dan's Fish, and over the last few years, puffers, freshwater puffers have become extremely popular. A lot of people didn't even know freshwater puffers were a thing. Yeah. However, the supply chain is not really the best at getting us healthy puffers, and Dan has brought in thousands of puffers and has really got them down to get them healthy. And Dan's gonna share his process on how he gets maybe some thin, uh, lethargic puffers, just fat and healthy, and hopefully that'll help you with your puffers. Yeah, so you're likely to find freshwater puffers, puffers in your local fish store these days because they are more popular, but they're likely to be quite emaciated. So how do you turn that emaciated puffer into a fat, sassy, uh, happy puffer? Um, I want to show you kind of where we're at in this process. These are some Congo spotted puffers. These are to the point now where some of them are ready to sell, but you can see there's still some that aren't quite fat and sassy yet. They aren't eating as well. They still have some time to get there. Um, when you first see these in your pet store, you're probably gonna see them skinny and you're probably gonna see the fins really, really clamped. What that means is that puffer needs some help. So there's a couple of things. The first thing is a low stress environment. Put them in an environment where maybe they aren't with other fish, just their own kind if you have multiples. Some of these puffers do fine in groups food that they readily recognize and are eager to eat. We smash up snails, it's gross, but the puffers we sell, uh, Congo spotted puffers and Amazon puffers, don't have massive mouths. And so we collect pest snails, bladder snails, uh, ram's horn snails, pond snails, and we actually crush them up and then put them in with the puffers so the puffer can easily get to them. That, frozen bloodworms, frozen mice as shrimp, and we also have live scud cultures, so we feed the, the puffers scuds as well. Um, if your puffer will eat nothing, it'll eat scuds. It's like a very natural food for them. We also breed shrimp here, caridina and neocaridina shrimp, things like cherry shrimp. And so when we have a surplus population or the strain starting to get a little weak and we need to uh, thin it out, we'll feed the coals to the puffers. So those are foods that they'll easily eat right away. Even the frozen foods, frozen bloodworms, they'll usually eat within a day or two of, of first arriving. They'll get to the point where they will eat prepared foods. They'll eat pellets and vibrabites and rapashi, uh, but you wanna start them with foods they're eager to eat. Check the teeth before you buy your puffer. If the teeth are like huge, you probably wanna wait. Those teeth will be worn down as they eat crunchy, hard foods, but you don't want to limit the diet you can feed that fish when you first get it. You want to be able to feed it frozen bloodworms and other foods that it just really likes, but that won't wear down the beak. So that's something to check. Okay, you've got your puffer now. It's not very fat. It's, uh, its tail is clamped up, it, but you've put it in an environment where it's low stress. Give it a couple days to just chill out. On day two though, I would start with some medications. What we've found is these guys come in with parasites. That's not a surprise, they're a carnivore, so they're getting parasites from the prey that they're eating. And so we do a regimen of Prazi, Quantal, and Metronidazole. We do three treatments a week apart. And then we also treat them for worms because they often come in with worms. Levamisol takes care of that. Um, I'm hesitant to say the dose we use because I don't know exactly how levamisole acts with different water parameters. And levamisole is a medication that if you dose too heavily, it will kill your fish. But levamisole does work for uh, different worms. And we treat that, and then in two weeks we treat again because that, the, the worms they come in with, that tends to hit that life cycle. So real quick, uh would you proactively treat maybe like once a year or is oh, it just I like the one and done thing? We just do it at the beginning and once they're free of parasites, they tend to start gaining weight. Not quickly, but they start gaining weight. So what I would say is if you've got a, a puffer that's fat and sassy and you've got them healthy and down the road they start getting thin again, maybe I would treat again. but. I don't think I would ever do that once, unless I saw some signs. Sure. I wouldn't just do it to do it. Yeah, I think once you clear them out, they're not gonna be getting reinfected uh, from the foods we feed in aquariums. The only possibility, I suppose, is if you put 
other fish in with them and the fish had something and spread it around. But no, I don't think I would unless I saw signs. Now, I'm not a veterinarian. I'm just a hobbyist who's trying to keep his fish healthy. Yeah, I guess we but, should uh, yeah. put the disclaimer in there. Yeah, like, yeah. we're not veterinarians. This is just some best practices yeah. that Dan's but fish has found. I do work with veterinarians and they have helped me uh, figure these things out. So is there other things that could be done? Are there better things that could be done? Possibly. I'm just telling you what we do here. Okay, disclaimer is done. <laughs> I feel like I won't get sued. So the other thing that we've had to do on occasion is if the puffers, um, we go through the parasite treatment that I just described and the puffer is still not eating well, still not recovering. I'm not saying they're fat right away, that takes time, but they aren't interested in food, you're, you're having trouble getting them to eat. Then we do use antibiotics. We don't usually have to do that, but there's definitely been cases where the weakest ones in the batch, we've had to remove, put in their own tank, and we treat those with canamycin and nitrofurazone. Um, I don't have any specific diagnostic of what that bacteria is or or why some of them are so much weaker than others in a batch. I think it might just be what they've experienced and how beaten they are by the time they get to you. But that is something that we do and we've had great luck with if they don't respond. Well, if you get them clear of parasites and they still are having a hard time. So you've got them clear of parasites. Hopefully you don't have to do the antibiotics, but maybe you did that. And now the puffer has been treated what do we do now? It still looks skinny. It's going to look skinny. These have taken us months to get to this level. you got to be patient. Just keep feeding them. Two, three times a day, feed them meaty foods, feed them a lot, and change the water because if you're feeding them a lot, they're creating a bunch of waste. So keep the water clean, but keep food in front of them. It's going to take a long time, but it'll be worth it. After a few months, as long as the medications went as planned, I'd be surprised if they aren't starting to look like this, where we're pretty much just about able to start selling these. In fact, we've started selling the best ones. And what's gonna happen is some of them are gonna get fat and happy before others. We'll sell those. And then gradually the weakest ones in here, like this little guy back here, he's just not nearly as big. But what's good is look at his tail. He's not clamped and he's not in his stress colors and he is eating, so. He'll recover with time. Would you say that the, the clamp fin is like the first sign that there's, they're stressed or something's wrong? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean they have a disease, but... Um, like so nitrate's too high, just something's off, basically. They're stressed for something. This is normal. Like, they often swim holding their tail like that. But when I say clamped, I mean it comes to a hard point. Okay. And when they're swimming, they never relax it. Like you'll see them just going like this, you know, opening and closing it. Um, if they're swimming around and it's to a point all the time and they don't ever relax it like that guy just did, um, that's just a sign that they're still, they're still really having a problem. They don't feel well and they're stressed. And they also get a different coloration. It's kind of like the black band that goes across the top of the body becomes very pronounced. Okay. Now, that can happen with a perfectly healthy puffer that's newly moved to a new tank or whatever, just because they're stressed from the move. But they tell you what their colors and, and their tails and their behavior. Um, something that people are concerned about a lot is their eyes. If you look at these eyes, it might look like they have cloudy eyes. Yeah, kind of like they're glossed over. Yeah, they don't. That's, that's natural for the puffers. If you look very closely with a magnifying glass or something, you'll see that there's like these metallic uh, striations, lines across the lens of the eye. I don't know if it's the lens, off, over the outside of the eye. And that just is a normal, I looked that up because it was worrying me. It's, it's just the normal eye of a puffer. Okay. So, yeah, I see it a lot. And I've, I've heard people say that like, that's a sign of stress or something's wrong. And I could never like, sometimes my puffers would get them and yeah. you know, yeah, varying I degrees. I forget so. where I finally found the answer, but I finally found the answer that that's, that's not cloudy eye. So, what would you say your average, like you get them in, you unbox them, you treat them, you fatten them up, like from the point you get them to the point that they're healthy and sellable. It's three months. About three months. So yeah. patience definitely yeah. a key. There has been, so sometimes I can get these from a, a, a breeder. And in that case, 
it's a lot quicker because they're aquarium bred. They aren't going through the 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 supply chain, which is rough. Um, but they aren't breeding a lot of them. Often they aren't available. So I bring them in from someone who does a better job than everyone else, um, except for the guy that breeds them. Sure. But it's still not perfect. We, we're working with them. We're trying to make it better. Um, there's only so much we can do, though. There's been once when we brought in a group of Amazon puffers, and within two weeks, we were able to sell them. Like, they came in wow. fat and healthy. And I think what it is is when were, were they collected? They collect the puffers, and if they sit for a long time in holding, I think they just gradually lose weight. I think if they're collected and, and get to us pretty quickly, then I think they retain their weight. I just don't think they're fed very well at these uh, facilities in these countries where they're collected. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have access to frozen blood worms and stuff. And so I just, I think that's I mean, the I mean it makes sense, but yeah. any other tips or random tricks you found? Yeah. Once they're fat and sassy, feed them rapashi infused with oyster shell. Oh, that's smart. Um, that will wear down their beak. Now, Congo spotted puffers, their beaks don't grow very fast. I've never had to trim them. But Amazon puffers, their beaks grow fairly quickly. And so if you have Amazon puffers, what I would recommend is if you're feeding twice a day, in the morning, feed the rapashi with oyster shell. And then at night, feed them, I don't know, blood worms or something else. Yeah, that's um, a really good trick. Or if you feed once a day, every other day do that. So you can find crushed oyster shell at any like livestock store because they sell it for chicken grit. Yep. And uh, you just take that, take your rapashi. As the rapashi is cooling, you stir it in, and it works like a charm. Yeah, one um, of the I, mean, I love rapashi for so many reasons. Yeah, so that's yeah. just another one. <laughs> you can customize it in many ways. Yep. Um, in fact, I made a video about how I did that. Now, when Rapashi sent me an email, he's like, thanks. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> nice. Um, so that's the process. It's the same for the Amazon puffers. Uh, same kind of treatments and same thing. But the main thing is time. It just takes time and a lot of food. Puffers have real high metabolisms. Yeah, they're they kind of like hummingbirds. They're just always going. Yep. All so right. That's well, how we do it. Awesome. Thanks for the info.